Gentlemen, we have called you together to inform you that we are going to overthrow the United States government. You still think that jet fuel brought down the World Trade Center? Does anybody else see a problem here? If the government has nothing to hide, why are they so afraid to answer a few questions? This story does not add up. The following program is brought to you in living color. Kennedy died at 1 p.m. Time for two little girls. And now we're to bring our feature presentation. Every day, our senses are being constantly bombarded by subliminal messages that are found in TV, movies, and advertisements. The subliminal messages we are subjected to are unrecognizable by the conscious mind and only recognizable in our subconscious mind. The messages and imagery are passively absorbed and then stored in our subconscious where propagandists deliberately implant artificial thoughts, which in turn can affect our actions and attitudes later in life. Experiments have shown that less than one minute after the viewer begins to watch television, the brain switches from beta level consciousness associated with active and logical thought to alpha level, which is associated with passive acceptance and suggestibility. This is why advertisers spend billions of dollars a year on commercials as well as product placement within TV shows. Political messages are implanted in fictional TV programs as the relaxed meditative state of the viewer is receptive to the programming. One example is AMC's Breaking Bad television series as it depicts a meth villain as a Ron Paul supporter. I, I, I looked him up. It's, uh, it was one of these physicists, one of Hitler's guys, a physicist named Werner Heisenberg. <laughs> Real cute, huh? In a basic college level marketing class, in, in, in your first year of radio, television, and film, at least for me, and, and then I've seen some other textbooks and curriculum and found it's also in those, but, but, but most RTF schooling, teaches you that they have had subliminals uh, for at least 70 years in the United States and Europe. And so, yes, there is subliminal messaging everywhere. It, it is all over the place. It's an absolute fact that they flicker it at a rate and that they have the televisions designed for that rate to bring you into a dreamlike state. I mean, it is a fact that within minutes you go into a dream brainwave when watching television. Go read a book by the father of modern advertising, Ever Bernays, where he calls you a dumb slave and admits they run your whole life. I've read both his major books. One of them is called Propaganda. Edward Bernays. The conscious and intelligent manipulation of the organized habits and opinions of the masses is an important element in democratic society. Those who manipulate this unseen mechanism of society constitute an invisible government which is the true ruling power of our country. We are governed, our minds are molded, our tastes are formed, our ideas suggested, largely by men we've never heard of. This is a logical result of the way in which our democratic society is organized. Mind sciences, or the study of human behavior in relation to the mind, is the newest of all the arts. It's less than a hundred years old. And it is by far the, the one that is most cloaked in secrecy.
the origins of psychological warfare uh, were in Nazi Germany. And in the Nazi ideology, they had something that was called Weltanschauungskrieg, which means worldview warfare. The idea for them was imposing the Nazi worldview on the countries that they had occupied. The Americans picked up this idea, created an American version of it, and called that psychological warfare. In trying to understand psychological warfare and in trying to understand the American approach to post-war efforts to control people's minds, both as individuals and on a mass scale, there's a lot of illusions about how that was done. Were Nazis involved in that process? Yes, they were. Project Paperclip was a United States government sanctioned CIA operation for the importation of Nazi and fascist scientists into the United States. Their statement was simply this. If we don't bring these people into this country and contain them, then our enemies, the Soviet Union, will get them. The first wave was to bring these scientists. There were 700-odd propulsion scientists. And then there were some 600 and some odd mind scientists people that they brought in. The CIA was given the responsibility of actually placing the individuals that had a project paperclip into the military industrial complex, including our colleges and universities. Mind control was a psychological warfare weapon that Adolf Hitler regarded as the answer for taking over the entire planet. The name for the mind control research in this country was MKUltra. MKUltra was one program of a series of programs that came out of the CIA to experiment with different types of mind control using drugs, using electroshock, using insulin shock, and, and other techniques. I think that the goal for those people who planned the program was very straightforward. It was an attempt to figure out a way to interrogate people and to learn how to protect their own agents against control by others. If you put someone in a position of being disabled by not feeding them or not allowing them to sleep or overwhelming them with sound, if you use massive shock treatment and you give people massive doses of drugs such as PCP or mescaline or amphetamines or LSD, and if you put them in periods of darkness where they can't predict from one minute to another what is going to happen next, so they're always dreading, there's no consistency to sort of what's going to happen, anybody can be put in a position of being overwhelmed open to brainwashing. Ewan Cameron was probably the foremost psychiatrist of his time in the 1950s. He was using high-tech sound techniques. He was using multiple kinds of loop recorders to force people to listen to recorded messages 24 hours a day for weeks on end to basically destroy people's thinking patterns. surgic acid into the vein and he patted me on the shoulder and said now there lassie we'll see you later and i started to feel very frightened and the fright became a terror and i sort of began throwing myself from one side of the room to the other 
I didn't know what to do to stop this feeling. It felt like my bones were melting. That I was, um, I just didn't know who I was anymore. This is not just a break in to people's homes. It's not just invasions of privacy by illegal wiretapping. This is uh, an invasion of a person's mind. And uh, that is about as uh, profound uh, an injury, uh, except for a loss of life, that the government can impose. This was a, a post-Nazi program, if you will. It was a, uh, an Americanization. I've often made the statement, and I still make it flippantly. The Nazis didn't lose the war. They just had to move. Now it's 50 years later. Now they're much more clever, much more sophisticated. They have a lot more money to spend. are not won on the battlefield, they're won in the minds of the people.